What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is all about ciliates and specifically how to get rid of them if you want to. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by our friends over at Polyp Lab, and we will be featuring their product, Reef Primer, and its effect on ciliates. So ciliates is a topic that does not get covered very much in the reef aquarium hobby, mainly because they are very difficult to see. And what I mean by difficult is they are practically invisible. In order to detect them, we have to use like ultra macro photography. You'll probably get a better look at them under a microscope, that sort of thing. It's not something that most hobbyists are gonna be looking out for. Now, why do we care about this? Corals can fall ill for a number of different reasons. It could be bacterial, it could be viral. And in this case, ciliates might be a vector for coral disease. Are ciliates actually bad? That answer is a little bit tricky because this is one of those topics that is poorly understood in both scientific literature as well as in the hobby. It's like asking if bacteria was bad. That's kind of a general question. Sometimes bacteria is pretty darn bad, right? Other times it's absolutely critical to the functioning of your system's biology. You would not get very far in reefing if you didn't have beneficial bacteria. In fact, your body would not be alive if not for beneficial bacteria. I think what is like the cell count in a human body, it's like 90% bacteria. And by weight, it's not as much, but even in my sized human, five pounds of what I think is me is actually bacteria. So kind of necessary. But like I said, it could be bad. Here are a couple of journal articles that I found on the subject. The first one comes from the Journal of Sea Research back in 2016. The title is Ciliate Communities Consistently Associated with Coral Diseases. Historically, most coral diseases, specifically those showing aspects of tissue loss, have been associated with numerous pathogenic bacteria. However, attention is now turning to other microorganisms such as fungi, viruses, and ciliates. They concluded that there were no ciliates detected in apparently healthy coral tissue samples throughout, either by microscopic examination or molecular analysis. However, ciliates were found associated with all coral disease lesions assessed, consisting of 28 different ciliate species. In another journal, this is from microbiology pathology in 2020 the title of this journal is characterization of coral associated ciliates and their interactions with disease lesions progression of indian sclerotinian corals ciliates high cell numbers with substrate containing bacteria free mucus confirms the feeding preference for nutrients in mucus instead of bacteria this suggests a possible feed-specific interaction of ciliates with coral mucus and tissues. The aquarium-based investigation revealed that the ciliates migrate to the injured and early disease signs of corals, enhancing the tissue loss and disease lesion progression. Thus, our results indicate that ciliates interact with the immunocompromised diseased corals and play a major role in the progression of disease lesions leading to rapid coral mortality. In my experience, Experience. A lot of times when a coral is stressed out and dying, that is when you see tons and tons and tons of microorganisms basically feasting like vultures. And oftentimes it begs the question, is it because of those microorganisms that's why the coral is failing? Or is the coral like long past salvageable and at this point this is just carrion feeding on the dead tissue? A little while back we had some micromusa that were kind of going downhill. In this group of Micromusa, the ones that were still holding on, they didn't look great, they weren't happy, but they didn't have a speck of any kind of critter on them. Once they hit a certain point, like this point of no return, however, all of a sudden you got to see all types of things gravitate to this. Kind of like what that scientific article said. There are a lot of critters out there that are going to be attracted to stressed and dying tissue. On the flip side, 
ciliates might be a positive thing. In the journal Applied in Environmental Microbiology from 2023, titled Possible Beneficial Interactions of Ciliated Protozoans with Coral Health and Resilience, the protozoan has been recognized as a potential biological control for pathogen removal within ecological systems such as aquaculture. They are also used as bacteriovorous organisms to prey on pathogens to avoid bacterial infection in an environmentally friendly manner. Thus, as bacterial predators, protozoans play a vital role in maintaining the ecology of the aquatic environment. The marine ciliate strombidium was studied for its ability to feed on pathogenic species such as Vibrio and E. coli. They have also demonstrated beneficial functions in numerous aspects such as waste treatment, bacteriovorous of pathogenic bacteria, and symbiosis between the ciliate and ingested microbes. Ciliates are an important component of aquatic ecosystems because of their role as predators of bacteria, algae, and providing nutrients for organisms at higher trophic levels. Now, ciliates specifically, we sometimes see ciliates come in on wild corals, and it's not always associated with struggling corals. In fact, quite the opposite. We have some really high-end acropora. I believe that this one is a Walt Disney. It has ciliates. It is also the healthiest that this acro has ever been. Its polyp extension was crazy. Its coloration was absolute peak. It was like this for years at this point. So the idea that, oh, ciliates is going to cause the downfall of this particular coral, that has not happened in our experience. One other interesting thing that I've heard is that ciliates could be one of these precursor food sources for all manner of organisms. Now, this did come up in the context of aquaculture, where the people were trying to raise a certain type of larvae, but they were finding difficulty because it seems that like the phytoplankton and bacteria were either too small or unappetizing to the larvae, and things like rotifers and larger zooplankton were too large or unappetizing to the larvae. So what they were doing was trying to culture ciliates that would consume the phyto and the bacteria to provide just that Goldilocks type of food source for larvae. Given how our corals consume large quantities of microorganisms as a part of their normal feeding, ciliates could play a part in coral nutrition. The jury is out on ciliates. Could be good, could be bad. We made the decision that here in a coral farming setting, we can't really take the risk. So whenever we see them, they got to go. It gets crazy when you're talking about stuff that is straight up invisible to the naked eye. You really will only detect these things under some kind of microscopy, like about 5x to 10x. And so we actually have a ultra macro lens that can give us between 3 to 5x magnification. That's the only time we're ever even remotely able to see these things. For us to try to remove it all, is it necessary? Probably not. We do it because we're kind of nuts. So what is the process to try to remove them? The main thing that we're trying to accomplish is to not kill the coral because that's the worst of all worlds, right? These ciliates might not have been bad at all, but what is bad is you dipping a coral to death. That is why we like to use reef primer. It is a potassium salt based dip and the potassium salts tend to be ultra gentle on most corals. In a situation where you're not really sure what's even wrong necessarily or if something is wrong at all, I tend to favor those dips that are the least likely to cause damage to the coral but are still effective against whatever it is you're trying to remove. Thanks again to Polyp Lab for sponsoring us. When we use reef primer, the effect on these ciliates is not like what we see with something like a flatworm, where the flatworm practically disintegrates in front of your eyes. These guys kind of just spin out. They get more active, and they just start to do these little loop-de-loops. As time goes on, the coral mucuses up, and these ciliates kind of get trapped in that mucus, and they're still moving, doing their little circle bit. And it's really unclear if they're actually dying or if you've just annoyed them. However, after this process, which we're probably dipping for maybe like 10, 20 minutes, we let the coral slough off all that mucus. And then when we observe the coral the next day, 
completely clear. You might have to do several rounds of this over the course of like a couple of weeks to make absolutely sure they're no longer there. But for us, it's been very effective. I think as time goes on, we're going to know more about the coral microbiome. At this point in time, in a coral farming operation, it's not something that we can really take those risks. So yeah, whenever we see them, you might be good, but can't stay. All right, guys, that does it from here. Happy reefing.